Hey everybody, I want to talk to you about Unraid Basics and what the different types of drives are. And the reason I want to talk to you about this is because it's been coming up quite a bit in Discord. Um, this isn't going to cover uh, things like uh, cache mirroring or cache striping. It's going to cover very um, overarching basics and obviously there's going to be different configurations and things that you won't see in this, but these are some good concepts for you to think about as you're designing and building your Unraid array. Um, and also just some like good rules and things not to do, things that you might wanna think about um, as you're doing that. So before we get started, I do have some terms I wanna go over very quickly. Uh, and like I said, this is all kind of general stuff. so don't uh, don't be surprised if I miss out on some specifics here um, it's not my goal to get everything uh, exactly perfect but this uh, should just give you a good idea so cache uh, the cache is a write directory it stores data temporarily the mover process moves the data from the cache to the array on a set schedule anything on the cache drive is not protected by parity Parity. This stores parity data, which is calculated during writes to the array from any source, whether it's from the cache, uh, from the array to the array, or um, from an external source such as like Ethernet uh, to the array. This is used for data recovery. Array. These are the drives that actually store your data. These are protected by parity. Unassigned. This can be a hard drive or a solid state. Um, it's pretty much a wild card. You can use it for whatever you want. Uh, again, this is not protected by parity, just like cache. Um, the difference between cache and unassigned is that cache has a specific purpose, and you can't use an unassigned drive as a cache drive uh, in the way that Unraid is set up. Uh, but you can pretty much use it on a sign for whatever. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, there's also some operations. So these are all physical drives that you would assign to a certain type. And then operations are things that happen on your array and on your Unraid server. So uh, this one says cache disabled. Sorry about that. Uh, so writing. With the cache disabled, it means you don't have a cache drive or you have a cache drive, but it's not enabled on the share. Uh, so what happens, the data gets written to the array and parity data is calculated in real time, which means high CPU and disk usage while that parity data is being calculated and written. This may interfere with other operations you have uh, going on such as a Docker or a VM, writing with cache enabled. The data is written to the cache drive, which in this case would be in a solid state, until the cache is full and then the write is stopped. Um, so it might just stop it in the middle of the process. I just threw that in there just because I wanted to clarify what happens. Um, generally speaking, your you would size your cache so that, that it's not uh, it's not too small where you can't write things to it, so a decent sized cache is always helpful. Anyway, uh, there's no real time par parity calculation when things are written to the cache drive. And that is because it is not protected by parity, uh, uh, as you can see up here. The mover. Mover is an operation that moves data from the cache drive to the array, your data drives, which also means real time parity calculations, same as this right cache disabled so basically that operation just happens later with a cache you're putting off that operation to a more convenient time when the array is probably not being used such as two in the morning uh, no no one's going to be using it you're not going to be using it so uh, it's best to offload the parity calculation until that time a read uh, you are reading a file from the files location wherever it may be uh, whether it's on the cache or the array. 
Um, so if your cache is a solid state, your read will be faster while that drive is on your solid state. If it's on your array, it will be down to the array speed. Uh, and in the way that unread works, the array is not necessarily an array. We'll, we'll, we'll call it an array for this, but um, I will show you this in the config section of this. Um, it's down to the sum of your uh, drives, but it only reads and writes at the speed of one drive um, because they're all independent. And it doesn't work like traditional RAID, that's why it's called unRAID. So, uh, degraded read. This happens when you are missing a hard drive and you have parity, and it will attempt to read the file from the location if the file exists or the location exists. If the file does not exist, it will simulate the file from parity, which is a Think of it as like a reverse parity calculation. So uh, it's going to use the existing parity data and calculate calculate the file, uh, which basically means high CPU and disk usage, and it may interfere with other operations such as VMs or Docker's. All right, so that's the base info out of the way. Um, let's look at some good configurations. A typical configuration. Uh, Let's just, all of these are going to have the same drive sizes. So let's get that out of the way first. Um, I'm just using 10 terabyte as an easy number. Uh, and we can look at how that stacks up. So we have, in all of these configs, we have three array drives, 10 terabytes A, B, and C with, uh, you know, data A, data B, data C on each one for a total of 30 usable terabytes. And in all of these situations, we will have one parity drive, which is enough for the parity data for drives A, B, and C. In this typical config, this green box here, we have a one terabyte SSD cache. And on that, on that, um, on that cache drive, we have our app data, our dockers and VMs, and then it's also the right cache. So as data is coming in, uh, it ingests that data, stores it, uh, and then the mover moves it across to the array where parity is calculated as well. Okay, this is a very typical config. I would say probably, let's say 60 to 70% of you run a config like this or should run a config like this. This is uh, not, there's nothing wrong with this. If you would like to optimize this further, let's look at this blue one down here. You notice that everything here is the same but we also have a one terabyte unassigned drive. And remember, this cache here is not parity protected. So we don't have parity protection for our app data and Docker here, um, which is fine because generally speaking, SSDs are very, uh, very reliable. Uh, but if you do want to back up your Dockers and app data, you can set up a backup where it backs up the data to the array. Uh, but I would not recommend, and we'll get into that anyway. Um, so in the optimized config, um, we have the one terabyte SSD as a dedicated write cache. And what we've done is we've moved our app data and dockers and VMs to an unassigned SSD. So if these need the resources and the speed from that SSD, they're not interfered with by the reading and writing uh, from the write cache or the mover operation here. This is probably as far as I would go and, and like what I would recommend for most people. Again, you don't need to use these drive sizes, but I'm just using some easy to use numbers and something to sink your teeth into basically. All right, so another kind of little bit of an oddball config is the large write file optimized config. You can actually use hard drives as cache drives. Um, I think it might take a little bit of configuring in the unraid settings. Uh, but again, if you're going to be using an SSD for your app data and Docker, which is really the most important part, that needs to be on the SSD. Um, if you're just writing, a hard drive can easily keep up with gigabit ethernet, whether it's reading or writing. So uh, if you're ingesting a lot of files, 
and you think that you might be ingesting a lot of files at one time before the mover actually runs, uh, using a hard drive as a cache isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, I would say most of you probably don't need a setup like this and probably don't need to, but maybe it's something you haven't thought about. Um, so just just consider it. It's it's there if you need it. But uh, you know we could write a two and a half terabyte file or something like that onto this ten terabyte, and it wouldn't even it just wouldn't care. Uh, whereas if we try to write a two and a half terabyte file to this one terabyte SSD, it's going to have a problem. Now with all of these good configure uh, configurations, we have parity protected arrays. And you might ask, okay, that's great. What does it do for me? Well, let's take this optimized configuration here. Let's say um, your hard drive dies and that will be hard drive B. Or uh, you accidentally kick your server and the uh, hot swap tray pops out and hard drive B is removed or just whatever. Hard drive B disappears and you're like, oh crap. Well, there goes all of my data. Well, you do lose the data from hard drive B. Uh, so let's just delete that. So now you're left with A and C on your array and you've got a big chunk missing here in the middle. Well, like I said before, the parity will simulate the contents of uh, 10 terabyte B and you can still use it and your data will still be there. What you would do is determine the source of your failure, replace the drive with a equal or larger size drive. Um, in this case, it would have to be 10 terabytes, but uh, so we'll put a 10 terabyte back in. The contents of B will be rebuilt off of this parity onto uh, this drive. Obviously, there's a little bit more complexity than, than that, but that's really all you need to know. Um, so your data is safe and available in that case. So that's why parity is very important. I think it's always necessary to have at least one. And in some cases, you can have two parity drives. So uh, that, I mean, not in some cases, you can have two parity drives, period. Uh, it doesn't matter how many drives you have, um, you can have two. Uh, the rule with parity is that it needs to be as large as your largest drive or larger. So these could be 12, they could be 14 terabyte, whatever. So anyway, let's say that, you know, B gets rebuilt. So you're fine. That is why parity is important. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. Um, obviously, again, I keep saying this, there's more to all of this, but I'm going to give a very base level uh, description of all of this because I know this keeps coming up quite a bit. So those are good configurations. And um, really, you should be looking at something like any of these uh, for most of your needs. Let's look at some common bad configurations that I have seen people run and they constantly complain, oh, I have these issues or whatever. Uh, here's, here's why. And here's some of the bad configs I've seen. All right, so you notice that bad configuration looks identical to good config, you know, the typical config number one. Hard, hardware is identical. The issue is We've got our write cache here. Okay, that's fine. Um, but we have our app data and Docker on the array. And the problem with putting our app data and Docker on the array, app data and Docker, they, well, let's say VMs too, especially, they generate data and read data quite a lot. And what did we determine happens when data is generated or let's say written uh, to a cache disabled uh, device, which would be you're writing to the array directly, which means real time parity calculation, which equates to high CPU and disk usage, which may interfere with other operations. We can minimize that interference by removing this data from a parity protected device and putting it onto either an unassigned or a cache drive. This is so freaking common. 
Uh, it drives me up the wall. And I swear there must be people out there recommending this. Uh, but I, I really do not recommend it because as soon as you start doing anything on any of these, oops, uh, as soon as you start doing anything on any of this, it's just going to have a really bad time. Um, you, like, for example, if you want to play something back with Plex and your client is transcoding. Okay, well, that transcoded data is being written to the array, parity is being calculated. And then it's being read from the array, and that is going to slow down or completely stop the process. So do not put your app data and Docker on your array under any circumstances. This needs to be over here, or it needs to be over here. All right. So bad configuration number two, there's no write cache. We have parity and array. Okay. That's great. Um, but there's no write cache. So while you might see again, degraded performance with app data and Docker and VMs on your array, um, that will degrade performance as it is. Almost certainly you will run into lockups when you write a file to this because not only are these using the parity and the CPU to calculate parity, as soon as you write a file, it's getting written directly to the array, which is more parity calculation, more CPU usage. Um, so this is even worse than this. This is pretty bad as it is. This is worse. Um, this is another common configuration that people do, and that's for people that like to live on the edge. You've got your one terabyte SSD, you've got your app data, Docker VMs, and it's being used as a write cache. Uh, no problem there, but uh, you have no parity. And what happens with no parity? Like we said before, uh, say that 10 terabyte B drives with all, all of your B data on it. Um, say that dies. Well, what happens? We'll delete that. All that get all that data is gone. Period. End of story. Uh, you're not getting it back. Um, luckily, because of the way Unraid works, A and C still exist with all of their data intact, but B is yeeted off of your server. There's nothing there. So. It is important to have at least one parity drive. I like to use the rule of uh, once you once you start getting above eight to ten drives, then you start looking at adding a second parity drive. I think that's totally reasonable. Um, and if you have greater than twelve drives, I think you should have two parity drives, no questions asked. So this is another less common config i would say most people run parity there's a sort of meme going around the compute uh, the community it's the no parity gang because i know there's a few people out there that don't run it but you know what uh, i don't want to hear you complain if you lose drive and then you lose all the data on your drive um, because you don't you can't sacrifice one drive to be a parity drive especially with like you know eight terabytes are like 125 bucks just like just put that in I promise you it'll save you um, <laughs> over $125 worth of effort to uh, to run one parity drive. So this has been some very basic concepts with Unraid. And I know there's probably a better way that I could have presented this, but um, it is some information that I wanted to get across uh, to you guys. And I know it does get brought up a lot. So hopefully I can link this video and people bring it up. I can just say, look, watch this because it is important. Um, if I missed anything, please comment. But also, again, please realize I'm going over some uh, some very high level concepts here and I did simplify things quite a bit. So um, please understand that. Uh, if you like this video, please share it. Um, if not, that's fine too. Uh, but I will see you guys next time. Take care.